and you mentioned the timing is important. What would be some takeaway things for athletes that are keen to strengthen their connective tissues and prevent them, you know, or get stronger, uh, but also to prevent them from injury? Yep. What would be some big takeaways to, to start practicing? Yeah, so with the um, like your ligaments and tendons, because they're obviously poorly supplied by blood, the idea of the timing is to have it when that blood flow is peaked. So it's taking those amino acids, you know, when they're peaking within the blood to the tissue at that peak time. So we found that that was between sort of 30, 30 to 40 minutes. 30 to 40 minutes. This is post-exercise? Pre-exercise. Oh, pre-exercise. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, so you're so wanting to... System. Yeah, so you consume it at peaks in the blood and then when you've got that peak, peak blood flow, they're kind of there ready to go to, I guess, take to those tissues. Is there a role in nutrition for injury management uh, and or prevention for, for footballers? Yeah, so obviously the collagen space is a big one. So collagen um, is the most prominent uh, protein in your body. So it's in skin, it's in bone, um, it's, you know, um, yeah, as I said, connective tissues. So it's in all of your, your body's tissues. So, um, you know, potentially there's a role with collagen supplementation, um, with injury prevention. Um, and then obviously you, your bodies are made, you know, we eat, we need to eat to survive. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, if you don't eat, your body's going to break down. So if you don't have good nutrition, um, you, your body's going to break down or you're not going to be optimizing those, that tissue integrity. So it's kind of, it's something that, Athletes will often roll their eyes at dietitians when we say, you know, eat good diet quality because it's kind of like eats you fruits and veggies and, you know, your, your dairy and all these kind of food, food groups. But there's a, a good impact in terms of injury prevention in that because you're providing your body with everything it needs to make cr like strong, rigid tissues. So if you think of bone, muscle, connective tissue, yeah, so there's definitely, um, definitely a role in terms of that. Is there a recommended amount of collagen we should be having each day? Uh, and how does that depend from body mass to gender and age or what are the key sort of variables, I guess, that people need to be aware of? Yeah, so that's still research that needs to be done. Um, yeah. so, There's another PhD right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's so much unknown about that space. Um, and I know yeah, Keith's okay. doing sort of more in the performance-based uh, sort of area within the collagen research. So um, at the moment, the research is kind of 15 to 20 grams. I'd be surprised if there wasn't a dose response because obviously, you know, your, your tissues are different sizes if you're a smaller compared to a larger athlete, um, but it hasn't sort of been looked into um, at this point in time. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. more in terms of the amount, it would, it would be trying to get to that 15 to 20 grams, which yeah, is, is not, not too difficult. And it's more around, I guess, timing with what tissue you're trying to target. Yeah, and then um, for those that don't want to take supplements or, um, what, yeah, maybe from a funding point of view or they just want to get it from real food, what would yeah. be some um, food choices to make to get that 15 to 20 grams? Yeah, so it's, it's harder to get in, in food sources. Again, great um, study, a great research area to have a look at sort of we know that it, it stays in the body for only six hours, so it's not going to kind of build up and, and going to increase in amount. Um, mm -hmm. With the food source, so just gelatin. So um, like Kenzie's gelatin, it's like used for cooking and um, obviously a component of, of, of jellies and things like that. Um, it's a food source of, of collagen, um, so it's not necessarily, it's, it's really cheap. It's not as palatable as like a hydrolyzed collagen because hydrolyzed collagen has had bonds broken, so it mixes a lot easier in water. And what about um, protein intake uh, and, and post-workout? There, there seems to be a strong myth in the fitness industry about, you know, the, the window post-training and for those that want to build muscle mass or, or maybe help uh, optimise recovery, there's this like special window of whatever it is, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, seems to change a fair bit. But what's your take on it? Yeah, so the protein spread and distribution over the day is going to be more important. So post-training, um, I guess, uh, you know, you, you want to kickstart that recovery. So the sooner you can get it in, the better. Um, it's not going to be magical if you do that on its, on its own, though. It's more sort of getting those regular hits. So often, you know, we'll back-end protein intake towards the end of the day, but making sure you're getting it in breakfast, you know, potentially your snacks as well, depending on timing. So every three to four hours is what we kind of recommend. Um, and the good thing as well is there's plenty of um, high protein foods out there now. So, you know, you've got Chobani Fit, you've got um, YoPro, 
complete dairy, like there's there's plenty of food sources there that you can get those hits of protein in. And what would be some good resources for for those that want to educate themselves? What would be like your your go to for someone that wants to read up on um, yeah, eating healthy and and uh, getting that energy intake in? Yeah, so Sports Dietitians Australia have some really good um, fact sheets just for general information for different sports and we'll give kind of specific information around training diet and body composition and things like that. So I think they're a really good, uh, it's a really good resource um, for athletes. If you want to get a bit more scientific, the Gatorade, Gatorade Sports Science Institute, I find their fact sheets and sort of summaries of the research is, is really good. Um, to be able to sort of put everything together. And it's kind of that, as I said, that next level up from sort of the more simple uh, fact sheets. 